Do sketches get any better than this? Uh, this could have easily been drawn by Michelangelo. It's just Frazetta having a lot of fun and drawing an image of just tremendous power. And look at the menace on this man's face. This is not somebody you'd ever want to confront. And right beside it, an image of Tarzan on the trees in the jungle. This time, everything heavily suggested. Tarzan's arm blends into the tree trunk, blends into the jungle. Tarzan is the jungle in this particular sketch. I absolutely love this sketch. I've had it for decades. Beautifully signed, beautifully drawn, uh, as elegant as any Frazetta drawing you'll come across. Below that it came the dawn piece. Once again, here's Frazetta showing his ribald genius, because not only is the man, the hunter's crotch being pointed toward the female's posterior, but that's reinforced by the animal, who also kind of gives it a little extra testosterone-laced energy as he points toward the posterior as well. Here's Frank having a lot of fun drawing a panel and drawing it in his distinctive style. Again, a beautiful sketch. I'm blessed to have some of the finest sketches Frazetta has. As a matter of fact, I think I have the best collection of Frazetta sketches. And once again, here, once again, the soft touch, the soft elegance, the beauty of the hair, the sensuality, the hidden face, dipping the toe in the pool. Hard to think that a man who drew this could also drew the savagery of Conan, but he did. And right next to it, speaking of savagery, here we have a sketchbook page from the 1954 sketchbook, which was the greatest sketchbook of them all. And Tarzan is here in the dum-dum ceremony, renewing his savage energies at night in front of the flames, surrounded by all the apes. Here's Frazetta having a little fun with the scene. You gotta love that hair. Another great, great watercolor study. This one was done for a painting called The Encounter. He did that for author services, the Scientology off-group. And here you have a symbolic depiction of the meeting between science fiction and fantasy. And just for the heck of it, Frazetta on the tail fin of that plane, that, that spaceship, he drew his zip code. And Frank doesn't even know his zip code, so he did that kind of unconsciously. When I pointed that out to him, he was absolutely amazed. I watched him draw this entire piece and color it. A beautiful example of a watercolor study, and in the top three without a doubt. Right next to it, there's the Death Dealer. The only known image of the Death Dealer without his helmet. When Frazetta was doing the new series of Death Dealer paintings, he thought eventually he's going to have to take the helmet off the Death Dealer. So he was working on an image to try to figure out what was the best way to depict him. So that's what we have here. Beautifully blended colors. There's savagery there. There's intelligence there. It's just a wonderful Frazetta study. And he signed it and he gave it a name. The Death Dealer. Beautiful piece. 1950, Frazetta was working on another comic strip, trying to present it to the syndicate. It was going to be called Nina and her adventures in the underworld. And this is to the bottom tier to one of those pages. It was never published. It was never picked up. But what beautiful drawing. What lovely energy in that middle panel. And the right-hand panel that is unfinished, the rock work is as good as anything Frazetta's ever done. Frazetta, of course, is famous for his rendition of organic forms, males, females, animals. But in this case, he shows you how good he can just do rocks. I actually wrote an entire essay on how Frazetta's thought process went through and developed uh, producing the rock work in this particular panel. Exquisite piece. 1962, one of Frazetta's finest men's magazine illustrations. Uh, many of these illustrations were based on photo reference that he found. It was a job he was simply doing for hire. In this case, he had some fun. There's no photo reference here. There's no swipes. Frazetta has a series of four pages, back-to-back double-sided pages, which are in this auction, where he was actually doing all sorts of studies, just having fun trying to figure out this composition and trying to figure out the best way to have this girl floating in space. I've always thought that, uh, once again, Michelangelo himself could have easily drawn the back on this particular character. And as far as the girl, well, she is pure Frazetta. And I don't think Frazetta has ever drawn a better female face. This face is quintessential Frazetta. It's erotic, it's sensuous, it's sensual, it's got everything there. 
It's got intelligence. It's got power. It's just an absolutely wonderful face. I've never seen a better face by Frank Frazetta. Quick shot of the document that I had Frazetta draw. We were talking about how he wanted himself to be considered. And I said, Frank, just sit down and write something up. How do you want people to look at you? Put it in your own words. Sign it. Date it. So we have something. And that's what he did. And of course, I found a perfectly appropriate photo to go along with it. <laughs> Great guy. Finally, end this tour with a Roy Crankle piece. This was the study for a paperback cover called The Prince of Peril. And I think this study is far better than the finished cover. It's the finest color Crankle piece I have ever come across. I bought it way back in the early 70s, once again from Russ Cochran. I've kept it out of the light, out of the humidity, perfectly cared for. The colors are just as bright, as vibrant on it today as they were on the day I picked it up. You will not find a better color piece by Crankle. And of course, it's signed. Beautiful, beautiful image. And let's end up with this picture of Frank. Uh, this was the second negative that I took of this particular shot. I printed it up, brought this particular proof print to Frank. And Frank on the back of the mat says, love it, print it, Frank. Kind of did it cursively. And what was going to happen, we were going to print up 10 copies of this. He was going to sign it and we were going to sell it. Well, I printed up 10 copies. He did sign it. And they got lost somehow in, somehow in my move from Buffalo, New York to the uh, western part of the country. I lost them. I don't know where they are. I think they're still at a relative's house somewhere. Someday I hope to come across them. But this is the proof print. And it's a great later image of Frank capturing him just before he had his first major stroke. I couldn't help but end this with this great inscription that Al Williamson provided me on one of his secret agent Corrigans. To Dr. Dave, the great collector supreme, your friend, Al Williamson. Now that's what I call an inscription. Who wouldn't want an inscription like that? Had a lot of fun with Al. Once again, just part of a very nice Corrigan daily. Thanks, Al.